Okay, boss of YouTube, Six Foot Hacks here. Have for you guys today the team building video for week two of GBA D League season three. Now, if you guys may have missed our last week's battle, which was week one, uh, spoiler alert, we kind of got tossed on our necks. I think the nerves just really ended up getting to me in uh, week one. So hopefully we can bounce back in week two. We are taking on the uh, Texas Rangers, if I'm not mistaken. They're coached by HDL Productions. His channel link and stuff will be down in the description for you guys to go check out, as well as a link to the GBA uh, YouTube channel. They have like power rankings, uh, weekly recaps. I think they have like some fantasy league or like some fantasy draft thing going on as well. I'm not entirely too sure what it is, but yeah, if you guys want to check that out, then all those links and stuff are down below. Uh, earlier today, I did upload week 11 of P4G. If you guys want to check that out, then uh, yeah, you can check that out. But yeah, uh, the actual uh, GBA D League Week 2 match will be uploaded tomorrow on Sunday. Of course, today is just a team builder. But yeah, with all that being said, if you guys are excited for this, make sure to hammer arm that like button down below. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about our team matchup, what you think we may have should have brought or what we shouldn't have brought. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. So with that being said, let's take a look at the team preview. So below me, you guys can see uh, our draft and our opponent's draft. Now the top six Pokemon on my opponent's roster are the main six Pokemon I'm expecting him to want to bring. So Tapu Koko, Mega Scizor, uh, Nidoking, Halucha, Alolan Muck and Jellicent. Those are the main six I'm expecting in this battle. Uh, Hydreigon could possibly come, but I really don't think he would bring Alolan Muck and Hydreigon. Uh, it's actually kind of annoying that he dropped Empoleon for Alolan Muck because Alolan Muck actually has a really, really good matchup in this battle. And that's already annoying paired up with the Tapu Koko and the Mega Scizor, which form a very potent uh, Volt Turn core between the two of them. And then Nidoking, I can't safely switch into or I can't really switch that well in to it paired up with a Scizor and a Lolan Muck, so I really do expect Nidoking. And then the Jellicent I expect to be brought for my Salazzle, which Salazzle could actually put in a lot of work against this team if he doesn't have the Jellicent. So hopefully if we can get rid of Jellicent, then Salazzle maybe would put in some work. But for the most part, again, those main six are what I'm expecting. Although I guess the final Pokemon, the Jellicent, could maybe be swapped for something like the potential Celebi. Uh, Meloetta, I really don't think it's going to come. Like Meloetta, Celebi, I really feel like have a bad matchup in this game. A uh, Cloyster, I honestly don't expect because not too much on my team really gives it a free Shell Smash. I guess he could bring like a Spike Suicide Lead set. That could maybe be a little bit of a nuisance to deal with. A uh, Halucha could definitely come as a Power Herb set because I don't expect them to want to bring Electric Seed since we do have Tapu Fini and I don't think he would want to be put in the scenario of where if Coco's gone and I still have my Finny and there's no electric terrain for him then he can't pop the electric seed to double the speed of Halucha but I do expect Halucha to come. Halucha could be a very scary uh, late game sweeper so I really have to be careful with that. Uh, again the Volt turn core of Tapu Koko and Mega Scizor is really really terrifying going into this battle like those two Alolan Muck and Needle King are the main four issues or the biggest four problems I think that I have to really watch out for uh, because everything else I more or less have a decent enough answer to or I can just beat accordingly but those four paired together is going to be a lot of pressure on us so that's mainly what I'm expecting going into this battle so with that being said let's go ahead and jump right into this so actually first off I want to give a huge shout out to the front office homies uh, under the radar aka Kelly, Polly Mac, K to the 2, Kyle, Shuckle King 87 and uh, Harris is awesome awesome and shouts out to actually no i don't think i hit up the the bullet punch club homies this week but yeah shouts out to the to those five for uh, helping me build for this week in the uh, gba d league so hopefully we can bounce back after taking a very rough loss in uh week one so the first team member that is going to be coming for the durham dragons is going to be umaga rest in peace umaga aka the dawn fan and this was a set that was actually recommended to me by uh, kelly under the radar and it's actually the main win condition going into this battle because if you look at this set <clears throat> sorry 
and you look at the roster of the Texas Rangers, Dom Fan literally just comes in uh, late game, and if I can rock polish on the Sizzler or the Muck, I outspeed everything that is not Scarf, and I pretty much just pick up KO's Play Rough, Earthquake, and Fire Fang, boosted by a base 120 physical attack and a muscle band, Dom Fan definitely puts in a whole lot of work. Originally this was going to be a salt vested for Tapu Coco. Unfortunately though, um, obviously it's not so Coco could be a little bit more annoying, but this is while it may not if it's not able to sweep essentially, it can definitely break his team down enough and uh, we can maybe take advantage of that and go from there. But for the most part, a uh, fan is just really hard for his team to switch into accordingly like with the proper predictions I definitely think Don Fan could be picking up free KOs against the Scizor and against the Muck if it comes down to it. Thanks to the speed we are able to outspeed a non-speedy Mega Scizor which I honestly expect them to want to bring like a mixed defensive set mainly for Kieran Black and just to be able to soak up some special hits from a non-HP Fire Greninja potentially if it really comes down to it. But uh, Earthquake smacks around everything on his team except for the Halucha and the Clefable, not Clefable, Cel Celebi if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, those are his only two resists, or oh, Hydreigon too, but we can play rough Hydreigon on the switch in like a Dawn, so I'm not really too concerned about that. But yeah, really hoping that Dawn fan will be able to sweep late game. Uh, moving on to Pokemon number two, we have making her debut, Naomi the Salazzle. And this Salazzle, I originally wanted this to be like Rocky Helmet defensive Salazzle, but uh, Kyle K to the two talked me out of it and recommended that a Guav Berry might actually be just as good. Because if you look at the roster of the Texas Rangers, they only have two viable stealth rockers. Uh, Nidoking and Celebi. Celebi, I really don't expect to be coming in this game. And then if he brings Nidoking with stealth rocks, that is one free turn that he gives me to then take advantage of. Or that's one less coverage move that the Nidoking is going to be running. Or he's just not going to be running rocks on the Nido King in general, which is going to be really good for me because that just means I can consistently switch in my Salazzle against the Scizor, which is what this is mainly here for. This completely annihilates Scizor and if I'm able to get rid of the Tapu Koko or any potential Scarfer that he may have or the Halucha, then Salazzle just comes in, nasty plots and sweeps late game. Although I do have to weaken a Jalicent to about... 30 or I want to say it's like 30 ish percent because even plus two fire blast is not going to be doing entirely too much damage to the Jellicent. Uh, Encore is mainly here if I can put myself in a position of where I can bring in Salazzle against Jellicent after it's gone for like Recover or will o -Wisp or Toxic. I can Encore into one of those non-offensive moves and then I can Nasty Plot on it and then just continue to Encore him until eventually I get the plus six or he switches out and then I could potentially just pick up a KO at plus two. Obviously, uh, Assault Vest Muck is another kind of issue to this set, but we still do a lot of damage to it at plus two with Fire Blast, so that could also really come in handy. But for the most part, Salas is just really here to check the Scizor, a uh, pivot into it, and then potentially pick up KOs or just weaken the Jellicent or the Alolan Muck, which is going to be really nice as well. I guess this also can weaken Hydreigon if he does want to bring it. It also does decent damage to the Meloetta, and with Sludge Bomb having a 30% chance of poison on side of Misty Terrain, that is definitely going to be good for us as well. So moving on to the third, third, I don't know why, third <laughs> team member, we have Alexa Bliss, the Tapu Fini, making her return, and this is a very speedy Tapu Fini this week. I think originally I was actually Protect Calm Mind with a dual stab but unfortunately with him having a lol in muck now i thought the nature's madness would be actually a lot more beneficial just because if we're able to break a lol in muck then that makes salazzle a much bigger problem to him also, if we get rid of the Alolan Muck, that can make a potential Reuniclus or potential Bronzong a bit of a problem for him to deal with. So that's kind of the, uh, the idea behind Nature's Madness. Nature Madness also hits the uh, Celebi for 50% on the first time switch in, Jellicent for 50%, the uh, Meloetta as well, and the Hydreigon as well too. Not Hydreigon, uh, Mega Scizor, sorry, as well too. Uh, we have Moonblast for Hydreigon, obviously, but this, of course, is the main Hydreigon switch in. I really 
really didn't feel like I needed uh, a really bulky set going into this battle. The speed, uh, the timid nature with 164 speed EVs outspeeds a modest max special attack, Needle King, which if you look at Needle King and you look at our draft, comparing the speed tiers, there is absolutely no reason that Needle King should be running timid in this battle unless he's running like a choice scarf Needle King, which I would much rather deal with scarf Needle King than deal with a modest life orb or just timid life orb one. But if he does bring Needle King, I 99.9% .9 sure it's going to be modest life orb because again, timid doesn't outspeed anything that modest wouldn't already be outspeeding. So that's kind of the idea behind that with the 36 special attack EVs. I think we definitely ensure that Hydro Pump is a straight Oko on Needle King. Actually, that's the only real reason I have Hydro Pump is to uh, Oko Needle King. Protect is mainly there for scouting and for being able to gain back Lefty's recovery because I'm pretty sure he's going to want to bring some type of Scarfer in this battle, mainly for our Mega Aerodactyl. So Protect is going to be really good just to be able to scout out to see what he may want to lock himself into or it could potentially come in handy to waste a Z move. You never know, but that's kind of the idea of Tapu Fini here is just to be a bulky pivot, a potential revenge killer, and just uh, being able to weaken his team with nature's madness to help set up uh, Dawn Fan to hopefully sweep late game. So moving on to Pokemon number four, we have Zazaro the Mega Aerodactyl making his return as well. And this time we are running Stealth Rocks three attack with an Adam and nature with enough speed to outspeed Timid Tapu Koko by one point. I apologize for hitting my microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. But yeah, that's the idea behind this Aerodactyl set is that we outspeed Tapu Koko by one point and Earthquake I, I think is a straight Oko unless he's running a lot of HP EVs, which I really don't expect. Like he could be running, I think at the most like 60 speed EVs, not 6 speed EVs, but 60 HP EVs because Timid uh, with uh, max special attack and then the rest of those in speed should be able to outspeed uh, the Greninja that we could possibly bring by one point. And that's really all the speed that Tapu Koko needs in this game, but we should be able to knock him out with the Earthquake. I would have really liked to potentially have the Aerial Ace or Roost on the set, but Crunch is just really, really handy to be able to deal with Jellicent. As you can tell so far from the team, Jellicent is a really big nuisance. If he has a physically defensive Jellicent, it's still going to get 2 a KO'd by Crunch, but I think we only do about 55 to 60 percent max. But if he's running a more Spadeffle, Spadeffle, <laughs> Spadef bulky set, for a Salazzle, then Crunch does about 75-ish to 80-ish percent, which is going to be really, really nice. So if I'm able to find out exactly what kind of set Jellicent is, Aerodactyl could be a very good way to knock it out. Stone Edge is just mainly there for our stab move. He doesn't really have too many good rock resists outside of the Needle King, which we just annihilate with an Earthquake anyways. So yeah, uh, the main idea is for Aerodactyl to hopefully be able to get a Brox. Rocks are going to be really, really crucial in this battle just to be able to get off that necessary chip damage to help set up Donphan to potentially sweep late game. So moving on to the next member, we have Assault Best Regenerator Reuniclus. Now I 100% hate Assault Best <laughs> Regenerator Reuniclus. I really, really do not like Regenerator Reuniclus. I feel like Regenerator is by far the inferior set to Magic Guard, but in this matchup, this set actually really does a lot of work. This is a great bulky pivot mainly into the Nido King. This can consistently switch into Nido King and we will be able to find out if he's modest, if he's timid, if he's scarfed, I guess leftovers or choice specs, actually specs. Could be a little bit scary with the proper predictions now that I think about it. I don't know, I, I didn't really take into consideration Specs Needle King now that I think about it. Okay, that could be a little bit of a problem, but we will be able to find out what set exactly Needle King is running thanks to this Reuniclus set. The 60s Spadef EVs along with an Assault Vest ensure that Needle King never 2 KOs us with the Earthquake or Sludge Wave on the switch in, which is really good. Also, I think we can take two Life Orb Thunderbolts from Tapu Koko in electric terrain and then smack it with a psychic which is really really nice Originally, I did want to have Future Sight on this set, but with him having the uh, access to Alolan Muck That's just another potential safe switch in to Future Sight, so that's 
that does kind of suck. Then again, he does have the Celebi, the Meloetta, and the Scizor, and the uh, the Hydreigon to switch into Future Sight. So probably wasn't for the best that we would have brought Future Sight. So kind of happy I got talked out of it now the more that I think about it. But a uh, Signal Beam is mainly there for the Meloetta and the Celebi and the Hydreigon. I don't want to have Focus Blast because I'm just going to miss against Hydreigon. No, I'm my luck. Hidden Power Fire does about 60-ish percent to Mega Scizor, which is really good if we can maybe predict it on a switch in or if he thinks he can just freely go for a Roost or tries to just Swords Dance and late game sweep on Reuniclus, then it'll be punished and potentially 2 KO'd by Hidden Power Fire. The knockoff is going to be really good just to get rid of Leftovers, uh, Life Orbs, I guess Guess maybe assault vests potentially any type of berry he could be potentially running as well so yeah just a very utility variant of reuniclus this week and then finally off you guys have seen the team so far and you're probably wondering well tapu coco just kind of comes in and runs through your squad well that is where you are wrong my friend because we have one of the most fun sets i think i've ever actually come up with and that is Spadef Bulky Wish Protect Raichu. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at this correctly. This 100% walls Tapu Koko with this EV spread. We are never to a KO'd by Dazzling Gleam on the switching, even if he is life form. I, if, if I remember off the top of my head correctly, we are never to a KO even if he has Life Orb, which is really good because then if he is Life Orb Tapu Koko, which honestly I don't expect him to be Life Orb, I think Grassy MZ Tapu Koko or Fairy MZ Tapu Koko is probably the better route for him to go in this matchup just to be able to break uh, Spadef Bulky Assault Vest Dom Fan. But for the most part, this is our Tapu Koko switch in because again, this does not beat us 1v1 and then we can Wish Protect, we can even nasty plot against it and if you look at his draft again he his only ground type pokemon or only electric immunity is the Nido king which means raichu can nasty plot and potentially break down muck it could beat jellicent 1v1 at plus two we're doing a lot of damage to the scizor as well which is really good we can also do a good amount of damage to meloetta which is a huge plus Clo cloister just gets absolutely destroyed uh, i guess we are kind of walled by the celebi but we have five other pokemon to deal with celebi so i'm not too concerned about that also the great thing about wish is that we can pass off wishes to mega aerodactyl to Salazzle to continue switching in to Scizor. We can also pass Wishes off to Dawnfan to be able to get it back into Sturdy range if he doesn't have Stealth Rocks, and then that will help us sweep late game. We can also pass Wishes off to Reuniclus after I'm forced to potentially switch out with Raichu. Just all in all, I really, really have high hopes for this set in this battle, and I really wanted to put in a lot of work. And if I don't see Needle King or Celebi or a Hydreigon, which I mean, all three could perfect. I honestly expect Needle King, like first off, like I'm, I'm 99.9% .9 sure he's gonna bring that. But if either of those three are gone or they're just not around, Raichu can then possibly just nasty plot and sweep late game by itself, which is actually really cool. We are running enough speed to outspeed, again, Modest Needle King, but that's only really if uh, we have to get off like a, da a last ditch effort wish. So for example, like we can go for the wish, then maybe bring in Reuniclus, we'll take the hit from Needle King, get brought back up to full HP, or we drop to the Earth Power after going for wish, then we bring in Aerodactyl, Revenge Kill Needle King, and then uh, Aerodactyl gets the wish so that's kind of the idea behind that but yeah for the most part really really excited for this Raichu set and I hope it puts in a lot of work so yeah guys that is going to be the squad for week two of GBA D League again hopefully we can bounce back after week one and we can pull out a W let me know what you guys think about our squad what you think about our matchup make sure to hammer arm that like button down below and with that being said I'll see y'all tomorrow so later everybody Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain Tears are hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real